moment of truth. This is the first time in I think about four years that I've opened up this console. Are you ready, bro? What's up bros, what's happening, what's going on? Welcome to Tales from the Warehouse. Today I am going to be going inside of my storage unit, taking out a piece of equipment and uh, sharing the story behind it. And for today's inaugural episode, I have something really cool that I wanna show you guys. It's actually going to be my old DJ console. Now in order to get my old console out, I have to go deep inside of my unit to uh, dig it out because there's a bunch of stuff covering it. So I need you guys to do me a favor and hit that like button because uh, it's not gonna be easy or fun to totally take everything out and then put it back in. So uh, if you're excited, hit that like button, subscribe, and share with your friends on the internet. So uh, here we go, let's do this. Come take a closer look at what I'm doing for you guys. So what I need to do is I actually need to get behind this uh, shelf thingy-majig here. And the only way I'm gonna be able to do that is by taking this out and the stuff that's behind that and maybe even that white stuff out. It's in between this and this. So that's definitely not gonna be fun. <laughs> We finally got it out. Let's go take a look. So first off, a little bit of context. If you guys saw when I was daily vlogging, I made a video about my first DJ console. I had to get that little Hercules controller, not because I really wanted it, but because it was the only thing I could afford. I was still in high school at that time, so something like this seemed impossible to get. Now keep in mind that when I started, I wanted to be a club DJ. I never really wanted to be a mobile DJ, so I didn't really want any speakers or anything like that. What I really wanted was the dream DJ system at that time, and when I started DJing back in 2009, the club Club's standard DJ system was a Pioneer DJM 800 mixer and CDJ 1000's MK3. That was what every nightclub was rocking with. That was what every DJ, every club DJ wanted to have. Now, I couldn't afford that, so I bought that Hercules controller. And with that little controller, I started booking my first couple of events. Now, at that time, I was only doing house parties. I was getting paid like about 100, 200 bucks here and there. So at that rate, it was gonna take me forever to save up five grand to buy that big system. So me being pretentious, I went out and bought a system that kinda looked like the CDJ's 1000, the DJM 800, and this is what I ended up buying. I bought this from a company called Six Star DJ. They had this bundle package. It came with a flight case, two CDJs, and a mixer, and I was like, wow, that's a good deal. I bought this for 1,200 bucks. So I saved up with my little house parties that I was doing, and I eventually was able to afford this guy right here. Yeah. Now, before we go inside of the coffin, I want to talk about the actual coffin itself and share some stories behind it. And the first one is this right here, this logo. It says La Nica Mescla DJ Bar. My family from Nicaragua sent this me. One of my biggest influences when I started DJing was Alex Sensation. He's on a radio station called La Mega in New York City and the name of his radio show is called La Mega Mescla with Alex Sensation. Now obviously I couldn't name it La Mega Mescla because I'm not on that radio station. So I improvised, I came up with some play on words and came up with La Nica Mescla. Nica meaning Nicaraguan. It's kind of like a slang term. You refer to people who are Nicaraguan as Nica. So I'm Nicaraguan. La Nica Mescla with DJ Bar. Let me bring you guys in a little closer. So if you guys have seen my new coffin, you know that it's black on black. This little silver stripes 
are actually black. That's actually uh, something that I really wanted, but I couldn't get. So what I did is I did the poor man's flight coffin black on black. I actually went out to Home Depot and bought some Plasti Dip. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Plasti Dip. It's basically like a can of spray paint, but it's like a plasticky spray. I failed miserably. That's why it looks all shitty. Look at this. Let's take a look at the bottom of this. So back in the day, I used to be on college radio and this was our station. 90.5 Brookdale Student Radio. Now, before I was DJing on a MacBook, I was actually DJing on a Windows computer. And this computer that I had was freaking massive. This was a 17 inch laptop. It was huge, look at that. It's like the size of my foot. So I made this to kind of hide the fact that I didn't have a MacBook. Because as many of you guys know, you ain't a real DJ unless you're rocking with a MacBook. I was actually still DJing clubs with this big ass thing. I would show up to the club DJing on this big ass Windows laptop. This was also my introduction to Photoshop. I made this on Photoshop. There you guys can see DJ Bar and Vivo con la Nica Mesla. So this was version one and then I had version two. So I bought my MacBook three years later. So this is from 2011. Still had the Nicaraguan flag in the back, but this time it was a little bit cleaner. Switched up the font and then I just stopped repping these stickers because they kind of got tacky. Here it is, moment of truth. This is the first time in I think about four years that I've opened up this console. Are you ready, bros? Here we go on the count of one, two, three, and... <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. This is it, guys. This is a uh, vintage DJ bar. This is what I used to spin with back in the day. <laughs> American audio system. This is the American audio MX 1400 and I think they actually had a 1500 or one that was a step up above this that had special effects. That's the one that I wanted and I remember that the company they didn't send me the right one. This mixer also came in broken. Fader never ever worked. They sent me different faders, multiple faders, but it would always bleed. So when I was using this, I got pretty used to using these faders. So I got used to mixing up and down. Now aside from that, there are some things that I loved about this mixer. First of all was the fader feeling. These felt really tight. They still feel really good. There's a little bit of tension and I kind of like that in my up and down fader. Another thing that I liked about this mixer is that it had two microphone inputs, both XLR, and it also had volume knobs here. Another cool thing that I loved about this mixer was the fact that you can actually assign each fader to whatever channel you want. So for example, if you want this to be channel four, all you had to do was rotate this around and boom you are set to channel four so this could be four this could be channel one this could be channel two i really wish they made mixers like this this mixer was actually a little bit ahead of its time now one of the things that was odd about this is the fact that your booth had a treble had a bass so you could kind of mess with the booth a little bit i thought that was a little strange i mean why would you need to mess with any of this if it's just your booth aside from that another thing that i loved is that it had this input right here. This was a very, very useful feature that they added on here. And then of course, if you wanted it, all you had to do was set it to the aux four there. So I wish more mixers had this. This would save your life if your computer went down. Moving on to the CDJs, man. These were freaking awesome. These are the American DJ Radius 3 Thousands. I used to love the feel of the platter. The platter uh, feels really good. This guy had a lot of features that even the CDJ's 1000s didn't have. It had a USB input, it had an SD card input, it also had built-in effects, which is something that you don't see anymore. You don't really see built-in effects on your actual CDJ turntable. You had your filter, you had your echo, you had your trans, your skip, your phase, your flanger, your pan. You had a ton of different stuff. This was a CDJ well ahead of its time. And I actually think it still works. And as tradition, as many of you guys know, I am very rough on my equipment and I always end up breaking it. 
I actually broke this one. And I wouldn't necessarily say it was my fault. It was actually the fault of Radio Shack. One of these Radio Shack RCAs. This pin here that you see there, it actually broke inside of here so i don't know how to take that out it would still work if i could just get that little piece out so i could still use this with serato it had a headphone jack so you could actually plug it in here and listen to what you were playing and it also had a usb out so you could actually use this as a midi controller and that's actually what i used to do i used to use this as a midi controller now back when i was using this console i was still on virtual dj so i actually had this midi map with my virtual dj software to look Looks like it's in great condition although it is a little bit rusty and i don't know if the rust corroded the components inside but yeah guys this is it this is my old console wow so there you have it the story of my old dj console let me know down in the comments below if you ever had a situation like that where you really wanted to get one dj system but you couldn't afford it so you went with something kind of in between kind of something that resembles what you really wanted but it just wasn't it for me it was this system but i rocked out with this thing i did a lot of events with this this was my first introduction to you know real mixing i actually started messing around with like little baby scratches on this the platter felt awesome it was also a light up platter which was revolutionary for the time because the platters back then were just kind of flat this one actually had an led that would spin around red colors and i'm actually going to show you guys that in a future video but that's only if you guys want to see that let me know if you guys want to see a future video where i actually go in and plug this in maybe even bring it out to an event to see if it still works also if you know how to get the little pin out of here let me know down in those comments below we all started somewhere and that's why i keep it share your equipment stories down in those comments below i'll be sure to respond to you guys i want to interact with you guys let me know the story behind your dj console i want to know down in those comments below i'll be checking them out i'll be responding to you guys like this video if you like this subscribe if you're new around here and if you really want to help me out and you want to motivate me to keep pushing out these videos you got to turn on that bell and share with all your friends on social media facebook instagram snapchat be sure to share 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 Thank you bros for being awesome. Signing off with my old American audio system. Your boy, your homie, DJ Bar. Stay awesome bros.